I guess I'll start off with an opening statement. Uh, I knew in uh, August that we were in trouble when we lost Mario and Tyson's foot had not healed. Um, we were going to be shorthand a little bit in the kicking game. And we proved it when we kicked off against Portland State after we went the length of the field against arguably the best defense in the conference, with exceptions. Apologies to Weber State, who's finished statistically first. Uh, and then kicked off, and they ran a kickoff back for a touchdown. It exposed so many issues that were latent in our program that we were not going to solve. And I think we did a great job as a coaching staff of not allowing our guys to implode after 52 to nothing in 80 to 8. I mean, that's really something. The only other coaching staff that could say that was uh, Northern Arizona, who we lost 77 to 13 to Arizona and then came back and played for the conference title. So. Uh, I'm pretty proud of my coaches. I'm extremely proud of our seniors because at any point in the season after Portland State, we could have ate ourselves in a carnivorous way. And I'm just, I'm just real proud of a great leadership by a great group of seniors who who see the greater good, uh, the greater mission of the inside the program and what the program's about in terms of being academic, being social. I wish we could have played better uh, in gamesmanship, especially at home. Uh, I was especially proud of the fact that when we played Montana, we fought through to the final play. And had that final play been successful, maybe we'd be sitting here five and six and have a nice conference record and be feeling good about ourselves. Instead, we're two and nine and uh, on the end of tailspin. Uh, part of our tailspin obviously will can be arrested by improved play in some certain areas, particularly in our kicking game, where Zach Johnson had to beat both our punter and our kicker and our kickoff guy. And at quarterback, where now we have experience uh, with two guys. Uh, yet, we're going to look at uh, a long offseason because we've lost Brian Finney on Gonofo now for the season next year because this uh, surgery that will occur in January now will not allow him to play next year. So we've lost our starting left tackle for next year already. And that's a huge loss. Uh, Tanner is pretty wrecked. He got wrecked on Saturday pretty bad. And his availability for spring football is pretty much in doubt right now. We will just have to wait and see what that development means to us. The one thing I enjoy about Tanner is that he has shown considerable um, strides forward as being our quarterback. And e even in the Weber State game, you could see in those first flashes of those plays, we dropped a pass, we didn't get lined up correctly, we failed Tanner, and we missed a block, and he got whacked in the series before he actually got hurt out of the, out of the game. And he still, we were still present because he was really going to be that dynamic player at quarterback. So I'm proud of the development we've shown now at quarterback, and I'm excited to watch Tanner be our starting quarterback next fall. Uh, he's a little quicker. He's got a quicker release. Uh, he's a little more mobile, and he has, uh, you know, they both have nice strong arms, but his thinking is just a little bit ahead of Michael's right now. If you want to talk about just general overall failure, when you look at the strength of what our program was and what it was not in the fall, we went into the fall camp with six senior defensive backs, three at safety and three at corner, and we never played like it. And I know those kids tried, and I know the two guys coaching them, they, they, they tried awfully hard, but the back end of our defense is void of performance. Void. And that it showed up in kicking game, it showed up in second down and third down and longs, so we couldn't hold the fort. But our front seven, I felt like, played outstanding on defense, especially Tyler Cooter in our defensive line and Hayden Stout at linebacker. Wow. And our offensive line was never the same band. You know, Journey hasn't been very good since uh, they lost their lead singer. And when we keep moving the band around, it just doesn't sound the same. You wouldn't go to a Guns N' Roses concert without Slash, really, would you? I mean, really, would you? Uh, so the same thing is true of, of anything. To be good in this conference, you have to be lucky. By I mean, you can't get banged up. And then you have to be able to take advantage of what your strengths are. And for us, that literally was going to be an offensive line and a running back core that might be able to push them off the ball but when our offensive line got chipped up all of a sudden we couldn't push them off the ball and Xavier Finney's yards evaporated down to 800 and he just finished a, one of the greatest careers in the history of any Idaho State University football player yet he couldn't do it by himself so it's a it's a measure of the band keeping the band together on offense playing better quarterback on defense we must get better at the back end uh, and we must replace an outstanding senior defensive lineman in Tyler Cooter well uh, the, the guy who was supposed to be our punter is now our punter. 
Next time we play, Tommy Jewell is going to roll out as our starting punter. He's a three-year ex-quarterback from Highland High School who has all the tangibles, not intangibles, all the tangibles that we want from a roll punter. He can punt it, he can thump it, he can throw it, he can run it. He can play wide receiver, he can do so many things. So when we go to fourth down next year, we don't have you know just a kicker or a punter playing the punter position. Sean Cheney was supposed to be our punter, and then he blew his Achilles heel during the summer working out. And I hope that he can be the backup punter next year and maybe be the featured guy on kickoff because he's 6'2", about 200 pounds. And so his longer, bigger body would allow him to loft kick more kicks into the end zone, which Zachary could not do. And when Zach got whacked at UNLV, he's still not healthy. And he just did a yeoman's job of handling everything that we asked him to do uh, in a season which injuries became a, really a focal point of how inept we became. Michael did not have any expectation. He hadn't practiced for us or played for us. I mean, that's literally, I didn't know what he was going to be and what he was going to be capable of. I think he's still very good. I think he can be a, an excellent quarterback. I think Tanner can be an outstanding quarterback. So I did have, really, with Michael's expectations, he was given the job. Why? Literally, because he wasn't a freshman. That's and I said that over and over again. So it wasn't that I had expectations of Michael. It's just I was fearful of a freshman, and it proved itself right. Tanner played terrible early. He threw what we call vulgar interceptions, right and left, left and right, whenever he got a chance to play. I mean, he threw one against uh, UNLV that we're still wondering where the heck he was thinking. But he's a freshman, so you know when your kid goes out to play in the sandbox by himself for the first time. You're not surprised when they eat sand. And that's what was happening to us, our youth at quarterback. We ate a little sand early. No, he continued to play. He's, he's, remember, he's only a 14 graduate from high school. Our last quarterback graduated in 2009 when he played at 14. So he's just still a young kid, literally himself. He was just a year older than Tanner. Actually, those guys are actually both in the same class. And, but Michael had played at college football. and. and uh, and Tanner had not, so uh, I'm excited to have both of them back. I'm excited what both of them can be. What a game experience we have now at quarterback. There's no replacement for having game experience, nothing. nothing. No assimilation we can make during practice. <laughs> we'll make it feel like that. Uh, I think we'll play better quarterback next year. Uh, I think we're, we're going to be now a little hamstrung by injuries to Brian Finian Godolfo in our offensive line. Here we start off the year already down one dude. Uh, I like where we're at in our defensive front. We've got to get our back end fixed. Until then, all bets are off. Our back end on defense doesn't get fixed. I don't know what we can do. And our schedule is daunting. Again, we open with uh, we open up with uh, Simon Frazier, and then go to Colorado and to Oregon State back to back. I mean, wow. No, because our kick team units were going to fracture. We're worse. In fact, all those seniors we lost last year on our kick teams took everything out of our kick game. I mean, we kicked off this year uh, 23 times. The opposing team got the ball in the plus uh, 35 range. Might as well just kick it out of bounds every time. 23 times. So we're playing arena ball on defense, and a defense that is hampered by not being very athletic in the back end. And we're not great at corner. We're not great at safety. And we're devoid of safety play. And in fact, I'll go back to safety play overall. At, Idaho State University. We've had a lot of kids play and a lot of guys try to play to be good, but our safety play, nobody's talking about any of our safeties as being all-conference candidates. And that is the issue for us at Idaho State. When I was at Eastern Washington, when we got great safety play, we won. It's the same thing at Montana State. When we got great safety play, we won games. And until we get great safety play here, we are stuck. and We are way stuck. And for us, how do you find safeties? A lot of it at this level is luck. All my great safeties, the safeties I've had in my coaching career, have come from other positions, quarterback primarily. So literally speaking, we've got to go into all the high schools and find who plays quarterback for you and does he want to play safety because that's where our safeties are going to come from. No, it doesn't hurt us at all recruiting-wise because we're able to go in and say, look at our APR. Is it going to college, getting a college degree, what we're trying to get anyhow? Most of the guys that we recruit are not impressed by jersey selection, helmets availability, they're impressed, their parents are impressed by how we are academically and how we are socially. I would only love to recruit in Pocatello if I could. If I had to go out of state or out of the area to recruit, I'd go to Blackfoot and call it good. But we do, we, we recruit in concentric circles from Holt Arena. And I would like to see us eventually have all of our players, just from Eastern Idaho, let alone Southern Idaho, let alone the state of Idaho, let alone the Pacific Inter Intermountain 
north, let alone in the Seattle area, not have to go get on an airplane. You know, we're, we're making good inroads in Salt Lake City, which is a booming community, booming area uh, population-wise and player football player-wise. Yet we also have a heavy presence in Southern California and in the San Diego area. And those are the areas that we recruit from. Uh, but primarily, golly, we'd love to keep them all from Eastern Idaho. Uh, familiarity with college. It's his first college football. The only other college football he played before was on scout team at BYU, and that's not much of a prep for a college career. And then he lost a year just by sitting out, trying to get himself organized. And so he'll be a featured guy for us. Uh, he got some big shoes to feel Tyler Cooter done in our program, but John Raheem should be the featured tackle in the interior part of our defense along with Trevin Alloy. And with his Chris Edwards also inside there. And, uh, but Trevin Alloy and Robert Schwenke and uh, Nico Taylor should be eligible as a senior. I mean, his unavailability uh, was, you know, one of those three guys that we lost, three defensive starters that I thought were frontline players, Mario Jenkins, Tyson Manu, and Nico Taylor, whom you've not ever seen play yet, but I know can be a great player because he played all season long in scout team for me, and I know he's a, a pretty dominant player. Uh, Kyle Jones probably going to have to gonna play a lot now at center to replace Christian Dean, who was a three-year starter for us. Uh, Kyle's from, uh, from Caldwell. Uh, Valley View and he served a mission and came back and he played center for us a year ago in the red shirt this year and has three years of starting ability left. Uh, he has a chance to, to, to be a really, really fine player for us in the front. Uh, outside at uh, receiver, Matt Peterson joins our program uh, uh, as a graduate last year from Blackfoot. He'll be with us in the spring and that should be fun to see. Um, and then on defense, uh, <laughs> uh, there's a couple young defensive linemen I think are going to be outstanding players for us. Uh, Mason Jackson from the Tri-Cities uh, is, is an outstanding defensive end. This is Chance Selye, Trey Gee, both those guys got redshirted, along with Daniel Heck in our defensive line. And linebacker Cody Graves will be a, a frontline player for us right away and probably should have played a little bit more this season. Uh, the one thing I loved about our team, though, is that pretty easy to fracture. You lose to Portland State at home, and the next time, you know, it, what was disappointing for us was to come down the ramp after we'd beaten Black Hill State 55 to nothing and look at only 7,000 fans. It was disappointing to us, and it took a little wind out of our sails in the Portland State game. So what our fans, alumni, student body have come to expect is dismal failure. We've got 15 years of history to prove it, and we have. And so we, need to, we, we didn't want to have a step, step back. We thought all season long we could have a step forward. In the Montana game, we made that step, just couldn't complete the task. And if we lost confidence or game fighting ability, we lost it uh, on that just on the miasma of a bad last play. And it took us out of the Montana State and the Weber State game. He's not. He's literally the best person that's ever played football. Literally. He's a team chaplain as a sophomore. As an eighteen year old sophomore, he was a team chaplain. He's literally the best person that's ever played football here. Now rank him against anybody, and there have been some great people that have played football here. He's literally the best person that's ever played football at this university. And I will stand on the table and argue vociferously, um, vehemently, and all those V words forever because he's literally the best person that's ever played running back or any position here. Just literally, he is. He joins a core of, of all-time great Bengals forever. He's got numbers to prove it, but also just off the field, just a, just a gem, you know. Uh, he never took a false step. He never, had, he never took a playoff. He never danced out of bounds. He always attacked them. He always tried to punish the tackler. Uh, he didn't have blazing speed, but he got the most out of his ability on every single rep for four seasons, which is the basic thing we ask every single player on our team, whether they're a kicker, a punter, a trainer, equipment guy, give us your best all the time. And he more so than maybe me or any of my coaches or any player in this program over the last four years has given everything he's got on every single play, every single day, all the time, which puts him in a category outside of football. Uh, I won't have any idea until I figure out how we manpower our back end on defense. That's, that's a whole issue. We must grow and mature in safety or we're stuck. We're just a high-flying offense that turns the ball over with a defense that can't hold the fort in a kicking game that's shattered. I feel real good about the offense. We've been good on offense here since 11. We're in the same stuff, doing the same things. We're not stuck in the mud. We're not a four-wheel drive team. We're, we're a team that throws the ball. We threw too many picks this year. We got that, uh, that, that fixed over the last the course of the last couple of games. Uh, we got to beat, we've got to get more rack, run after the catch in our wideouts, which we got last year, which we didn't get as much this year. And we missed about 1,200 yards of offense from our receiving core, not making great run after the catch other than Kyle Williams who also returns as one of those, 
uh, Xavier Finney type of personalities in, in our offense. But yeah, it's a, un, until we get fixed in the back end, if we're fixing the back end of our defense, that means our kick teams are better because we've got quality, width, and depth in our kick game, and now we can cover kicks. I know our kicking game is going to be better because our kicker punter core is all now fixed because Tommy will be ready in the spring, and Sean's already here, and, and Zach has to just worry about placements. Uh, I'm enjoying the week. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody and to all you guys and to all of our fans and all the players and their families. So enjoy Thanksgiving and we are headlong into recruiting. 23 slots available, 23 recruits. We need five offensive linemen. The injury to Finian Ganofo has really altered our recruiting, has really had a big impact on us. Uh, we need to recruit uh, six defensive backs, three safeties, and three corners. And we need to continue to develop ourselves at wide receiver. We have, uh, uh, we have three full scholarships available at wide receiver. We have three, we have three offers out in state. We have uh, one commitment already from an offensive lineman in state. We feel good about that, but we've got a lot of, a lot of work to do. And at running back, we've got to make sure we find ourselves because losing Xavier Finney and just having Ja'Cory Ford back as a proven performer, well, that'll put a lump in your throat.